Well, happy Monday, <laughs> and uh, welcome Howard Levy, old friend from Chicago. Wow, great to see you again. Thanks for having me. Great to be here. Well, you know, these Mondays are a good time for me to reconnect with people who I have not been in contact with for way too long. Mm. Uh, I mean, um, yeah, I've known you since college. Not my college. <laughs> 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 but, uh, yeah, no, it's been a long time, and we've I've recorded on a bunch of your albums, and yeah. we played a lot of concerts together. Yeah, you were my special guest, my Downers yeah. Grove yeah. Uh, annual concert. Yeah. Uh, yeah, a couple times, in fact. Yeah, over the years, yep. and it's it's funny that uh, of the people who I think of as the greatest musicians in the world, uh, one of them plays primarily the harmonica, and that's you. <laughs> <laughs> and another is a banjo player, right? And you know I, who that I, is, right? It might be. Let's see. Was it uh, er, was it uh, Earl Scruggs or uh, Earl Scruggs is awfully uh, good too. But <laughs> but you know who I'm talking about is Bela. Uh, you're Fleck. talking about Bela, yes, of course. Right. Yeah, no, we we we, uh, we were we were in this band together. I think it still exists. Uh, in these times, it's hard to say what exists or not. But uh, I sure hope that that uh, the Flecktones uh, get back to touring again. And uh, yeah. yeah, we're gonna hang out together tomorrow. Actually, on Zoom, we're gonna. You know, all say hi to each other. Uh, We haven't all seen each other in quite a while, so, yeah. Yeah. Well, the the Flectones have uh, been really remarkable in moving music forward, I think. Mm. And and that it's a culmination of all these different styles and very complex music that's very beautiful and fun to listen to. And those those two things don't often go together, you know? (laughs) Oh, can I quote you on that? That's very nice. <laughs> the beautiful part is the part I, I, you know, yeah, it's very adventurous and 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 soulful. That's, yeah, you know, it really that, is. That, that, uh, because you've got four soulful guys playing, you know, and we're all kind of, I don't know, uh, kindred spirits, and that we're all trying to explore our instruments to their fullest potential, and then use that exploration to make music together, you know. Yeah, and it seems like when anyone comes to to Chicago and is looking for an adventurous musician or a harmonica player, either one, they call you. (laughs) I'm glad they do. (laughs) Yeah, they always do. And in fact, I mentioned your name just yesterday to Patty Larkin. She's going to be here on one of the Monday Lives. Oh. And I was just thinking, boy, her music would be so cool with your harmonica behind oh, it. You know, well, she's got. Thank you. I, I hope she gives me a ring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I bet she will. Well, um, you know, uh, my grandfather played harmonica, so that was one of my earliest exposures to it. He played a push-button harmonica. Yeah, the chromatic. Yeah, the chromatic one. He played those old Finnish folk songs, mm. and he was my inspiration. Uh, for uh, the tune The Immigrant. That mm. was one that I wrote in the style of a Finnish uh, waltz, Finnish folk song. So I remembered the, the kind of uh, chunks that he, ch- uh-huh. ch- that he did uh, in that uh, Finnish folk style. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think I, uh, you could play along with it if I uh, gave it a try? I'll give it my best. I don't know about doing the chunks, though, because my yeah. chunks might come out after yours. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll have to do, be a little more floaty because we do have a lag here. And this, yeah. uh, I have to tell everyone, this is more for us than, than, than for them um, because it's a chance that we can kind of get a chance to make some music. You know? Yeah, this is even, great. Even this time. Okay, well, well um, I'll put us side by side here and uh, I'll uh, give it give it a shot at the immigrant. Now, I'm, I might be enjoying what you're playing so much that I'll fr- I'm forgetting what I'll, what I'll be, be playing. <laughs> that's, well, that's the danger. You have to play more notes than I do at the same time, too. So <laughs> Yeah, so. Well, these Monday Lives are just to have fun. They're not a, not a performance. So. Really? Oh. Yeah, oh, so shucks, we can do I'm whatever leaving. we want. I perform all the time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 
to play with you again, Howard. Oh, likewise. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. I remember the time we played together on WGN, the Steve and Johnny show, yeah. and we were playing Starry Starry Night, Vincent, and oh, a truck yeah. driver wrote in that he had to pull over to the side of the road. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Those, I loved playing on that show. That was, yeah. that was very special. If they're here, if they're listening, hi, Steve and Johnny. Oh, yes. Yeah, we should say hello to some of the people popping in. Oh, uh, I see sure. uh, Marty and Joyce uh, just stopped in, and, and Jerry. Uh, oh, yes, um, John Weiss is here. Great, John. Good oh, hey, John. You. Yeah, and Mason is here. Oh, and nice. Eleanor, uh, Tom, Gary, and O'Brien oh, is here as well. So um, we'll... Uh, s Say say hello, and I'll I'll take a, a little while to read some of your comments um, later on. But I want to ask uh, you, Howard. Uh, I mean, what did you do today? What what was your day like? <laughs> well, we tried to deal with some some problems on the website, and um, I practiced for tonight. And oh, uh, good for you. Playing some piano, singing a little bit, uh, and that's one of the things you know when you're so, we're so confined and isolated in this time that it gives you a chance to kind of work on things that you that you might not have done musically and I, I hear that you were involved in some construction well, today yeah I uh, have, have been musically negligent today <laughs> I have to admit that uh, I spent the day doing uh, laying bricks and and pavers here I've got a picture here of uh, my handiwork uh, oh wow this is uh, our beautiful. front end <laughs> well you probably wouldn't want to hire this mason I, I, I don't know if I should put out a shingle saying, you know, Muriel's masonry quite yet. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is just bricks. don't want to bricks. hurt those hands, you know. <laughs> yeah, bricks in our yard. And, you know, so the real old bricks, you know, some uh -huh. of them have the, the numbers and letters on them. And, sure. And so just uh, laid a, a little old patio. Uh, and also made uh, baklava and mailed it to friends today. Oh. So uh, some, uh, some, people, some uh, friends. And we're, we've got, actually, I've got some right here. Um, we are oh. saving these last four pieces because we're going to have oh. t tea you know, with with friends. That stuff is so deadly for a harmonica player. You have no <laughs> idea. You eat baklava. You can't you can't play until you've brushed your teeth for about ten minutes. This stuff sticks all over the inside of your mouth. You know, it, it's dangerous. That and peanuts and popcorn, oh. all these things you just can't eat if you play the harmonica. Very hazardous but, being a harmonica player, I guess. I no, were you. you were you there rehearsing with the Flectones when? Uh, Victor picked up some baklava at my house on the way to Bela Fleck's house for for rehearsal. You know that sounds right. I you, seem to remember that. Yes. So yes. I, he did that two three times. So when I had some fresh baklava, because my house is on the way to Bela's house. Yes. So. Well, I waited until afterwards, as I remember. Yeah, really. <laughs> it's real, I love baklava. I love like Greek food and uh, Turkish food and you know all sorts of Middle Eastern delights. When I used to tour oh, yeah. with um, Rabi Abu Khalil, the Lebanese oud player, uh, he had a um, uh, 
uh, his percussionist, uh, Nabil Hayat, I, I believe it's passed on, he used to bring special things from these bakeries in Damascus and uh, box stuff like this, but like a different variety. And it was just, I had never had stuff like that before. It was wonderful. And uh, of course, uh, couldn't eat that right before the gigs. <laughs> yeah. But uh, speaking of Middle East, uh, I have a, a little Middle Eastern drum here. Oh, the you do. And uh, I just got this one and uh, I never owned, oh, it's been a while since I've owned such a nice one. Uh, I had another uh, ceramic one where the head broke and I never could get it fixed. And I just recently got this one. And uh, I've been, you know, playing a little Dunbeck. I've played Dunbeck for years, but I've added a new arsenal, a new little instrument, which you can't see. It's with my left foot. It's a, it's a miniature hi-hat called a low boy. A, a low boy. A low boy. And that, that was the like <laughs> original thing that drummers had in their kits. It's down under there. And I got it because it could fit under a piano. And you can't play a hi-hat while you're playing piano unless you're some sort of a contortionist. So, uh, you know, so I've been experimenting with this is a 7 8 rhythm, and the hi hat is on 1 2 3, 1 2 3 4. You know, it's a, a tune I wrote years ago in this Macedonian um, dance rhythm called the Lesnodo. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe I'll do a little sort of raga esque uh, prelude to it. It's kind of hard holding the dumbek with one elbow and playing, but I'll do my best. And yeah. uh, this tune was on the first Trio Globo album, and actually I have a, a very nice chart of it, um, finally, uh, on my website, if anyone's interested. So I'll do a little, a little bridge from your beautiful E minor tune into this F major tune. <laughs> Thank you. 
cool. I love that stuff. Boy, it, you know, that makes me want to dance. I mean, ever wow. since I first heard 7-8, that, that music, I was a teenager, I think, and early teens, very early teens, and mm. we were on our way to the annual Quaker meeting retreat, mm. and I heard this music, and I told my parents, stop the car, and I jumped <laughs> out of the car and joined this line dancing, this group of folk dancers, wow. and I'd never heard that 7-8 before, and I immediately just loved it. I, I just mm. it made me want to dance, you know. Mm. That... Uh, Oh, yeah, you know that one. I don't know it, but I just heard you play it, so I played it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's so quick. Unbelievable. Yeah, and uh, that uh, it just is a, is a wonderful time signature. And I think that was the beginning of just my love of uh, those unusual time signatures, the one I wrote in 13-8. Yeah, you yeah, know. yeah. And, uh, do you remember that uh, I had... You might not remember this. I had asked to audition for your band when I was in college, the Balkan Rhythm Band. Really? Yeah. Oh my <laughs> See, God! You don't remember no, this. no. Yeah, we actually no. met for tea, and oh. you played me a tune. It was in I think eleven eight time. You said, Probably. "What time signature is this?" <laughs> and 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 I knew that you know how time signatures work, but I was so nervous I couldn't come up with it. Oh God! And then you said, life. "Well, you know, you know." Call me in a few years, little girl, and, oh, <laughs> and you know something like no, that. No, I and didn't so, say that. No. no, you didn't say that. But you were very kind. Uh, oh, but you, you, I think you said that you didn't need a guitar player at the at this moment in your band. Uh, yeah, we had uh, Pat but, Fleming and Steve Roberts. Yeah, uh, so. and uh, Pat is another one. I I met him when he was he was still a a student at Evanston uh, High School, uh, and he I played for a class there. And he came and, and played with me. I was like, boy, this kid can really play. And I mean, some like you, I mean, like some people are like pros when they're teenagers, you know? And uh, yeah, you've always sounded fantastic, but I don't remember that encounter. I just, yeah. you know, remember years later, just hearing you play all the time on the radio or wherever and just admiring your playing. So I'm, I'm very happy that we're here together playing yeah. in whatever time meter and whatever key we'll play. In. Yeah. And, uh, I've just been admiring your music for a very long time. Yeah, mm. really, and all that, the cool stuff. Uh, oh, you haven't seen my uh, my new project, by, by the way. Um, this is uh, Acoustic Chef, and oh. that's the uh, cookbook with the baklava in it, by the way. Oh wow! And uh, so it's it's. Uh, oh, I just happened to find it. Oh. Uh, there's. Cook uh, the recipes from all different countries and music to go with each recipe. Oh, and that oh. one that I just played was um, going with the Finnish coffee cake. Do you remember when you played at my annual concert and my mother and my sisters made that Finnish coffee cake for the entire audience? I do remember that. Yes, yes, yes. yes that was that was oh, this one wow. here. <laughs> And so the tune we just played is the one that goes with the Nisu Finnish coffee cake. Oh, that's wonderful. So, so that's, that's been a, a really fun project. And Brian and I have really eaten well <laughs> since oh. we've been working on this, this book. And oh, he wow. did all the artwork and mm. the back cover. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. so it's... Uh, so yeah, you've always been a total, totally artistic in everything you do. And, it's, uh, it's, and, and uh, you know, great at all of it. Yeah, oh, so that's thanks. wonderful. That's Really kind of you. Were you playing with the Flectones when uh, Alash was playing with them? The no, Juven Throat uh, Singers? No, I met them because I, I subbed for, that was uh, when Jeff Coffin was in the band, but uh, uh, I subbed for Jeff on a Christmas show once around 2010, I believe, and uh, they were on it, and uh, yeah, they're great. Yeah. And so I've been aware of the, of the whole overtone singing thing for years because uh, Glenn Velez, in, who's the percussionist in Trio Globo, who I recorded that tune with that I just played, was uh, was doing throat singing since like, I don't know, the early 1980s probably or late 70s as part of his exploration of, of playing frame drums. It goes along with it. And uh, it's just for those of you who haven't heard it live, it's just 
mind-boggling the sounds that a human being can make using these techniques with their throats. Yeah, and really cool style of music too. It's it's yeah. it's earthy and folksy and wildly different from anything you've ever heard, you know. Oh yeah. And so we are in fact going to premiere it on YouTube at 6:30 tonight Central Time right after this. Mm. So if you go to my YouTube channel, it's also linked on the links page I have murielanderson.com slash now with the the throat singers but Howard do you want to try to uh, just play along with me if, if I just do the the, sure. the guitar part sure, okay. sure. You, you don't have to do the throat singing if you don't want to <laughs> I could do a little tiny <laughs> bit of can. it I can get a little tiny bit oh, of it oh good for you uh, just being around yeah. Glenn it sort of rubbed off a little bit oh. <laughs> okay this is called Tuvan Horseman hmm.
That one, I think I'll call that one waiting to exhale. <laughs> <laughs> Back to tuba. Yeah. Yeah. I hope we sounded like we were in sync because it sure felt good. To it sure felt good to me, too. Oh, good. That good. was fun. Well, let's, let's see if we can hear it. How does it sound out there? Let's see if we're getting some, some hellos. And, um, oh, yes, we also had a, a question about my, my vest here. Oh. The elephant vest. Oh. Yes, and uh, no, I haven't ever worn that uh, on stage or on, uh, on Zoom before. This uh, came a long time ago uh, from Chet Atkins. Well, actually from Chet's mm. secretary. This was the year that Chet had uh, entrusted his secretary to buy Christmas presents for all of his friends. Mm. <laughs> and so this is what she chose for me. So. Well, it's the it's a... It's kind of an odd choice, but it looks good on you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. Uh, and let's see. Uh, yeah, they're saying it sound, sounds good. It sounds, oh, good. sounds amazing. Yes, we are getting that. It sounded mm. great. Okay, that's terrific. All right. Mm. Well, you know, I, I was just thinking about back when I lived in Chicago and played all those uh, private parties all the time with, for really wealthy people, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, <laughs> uh, did, you did that whole thing, didn't you? Oh, I Howard? did some of that. Yeah, through in the early '80s, maybe up through the mid '80s, I I played weddings and private parties, and uh, I, a matter of fact, I was even in a Greek wedding band. Believe it or not, oh wow, uh, that was really far. I enjoyed that, <laughs> yeah. but sure, yeah, yeah, I played yeah. for I played for a lot of rich folks, and you know, sure, yeah. And um, yeah, those and then going up in all those all those high rises and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I did write a song about it, and uh, but that it actually predated my professional career days. Uh, it was when I was a furniture mover, and really? I was moving people. We had a a bunch of us with a step van, and we hauled furniture around. I know I, I don't know look like you were a furniture a, mover. See, oh, yeah. I, you didn't know I was a mason, right? <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, which degree are you? <laughs> but, well, no, since I, I just started today, I'm you know, really... <laughs> You're a first degree uh, mason. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, but, but yeah, I did all these, you know, I worked in factories and uh, I was a furniture mover until I got my musical act together, you know, and, uh, and felt like I could uh, really compete professionally. Uh, because I was, uh, you know, I had a lot of ability, you know, even when I was very young, but I, I wasn't necessarily confident that I could actually make a living at music, which is one of those things that um, a lot of musicians have to wrestle with, uh, you know, that old saying, don't quit your day job. So I, I had day mm-hmm. jobs and uh, was living a very hippie-esque existence, renting a cheap apartment in South Evanston and uh, and doing these odd jobs like furniture moving and I remember one time I rode up on top of an elevator carrying a a sofa because it was too big to fit inside. Just all sorts of crazy (laughs) stuff like that. And I think probably we moved someone into the Hancock building because I don't know where else would have someone would have been living on the 83rd floor. And I somehow got inspired to write this song in that time period or slightly afterwards, maybe when I started working with Steve Goodman and, uh, writing songs sort of was was infectious if you were around him he was always yeah. writing oh, stuff yeah. and so uh i had this little fantasy of what a rich person's life living in a high rise was like and uh i i never really sang in especially not in public uh but i always have written songs since i was a probably since i was a teenager uh and i finally started uh, i did a recording where i sang um I put out a, a book a few years ago called Songs, Poems, and Stories, mm-hmm. and uh, my wife was bugging me. You got to do an audiobook version of it after about a year, and I went, "Okay, I, I can read poems, I can you know read stories." And I realized, my God, I'm going to have to sing the songs. There's twelve <laughs> of them. Oh, oh, this is hard. Plus, I'm my own band, so I have to like play nice tracks. And some of them I sang live with piano. Some of them I played all sorts of instruments, percussion, piano, harmonica, flute, all mm-hmm. sorts of things, and even used loops on two of them. Um, but no, this one is always... sort of old stride piano sounding thing. Uh, I don't know. 
where, where exactly where it came from, but it was from that moving experience. <laughs> Up here on the 83rd floor I don't have a care in the world I don't hear a sound coming up from the ground With all the money I make I've got a view of the lake Oh, up here on the 83rd floor Life is clean, so serene We don't have any crime Nobody begs for a dime On the 80, 80, 83rd floor I live in luxury I've no idea what those common people do If they had bucks like me They too could feel free Instead of living in a human zoo oh, No dirt, no grease, no grime And it's quiet all the time I've got everything I need I don't pay the world no heed on the 80, 80, 83rd floor. When I get high I watch those planes fly by Smoke cigarettes Stare at the jets Can't think that nothing could ever be finer Nothing could be finer than the 83rd floor I really found out what living is for Take your houses in the suburbs Your mansions and your farms and Pass me that martini, cause it's getting warm. City living, it's the thing for me. Oh yeah. You're a fine singer, Howard. Yeah. I should be made to pay a fine for singing. No, but thank you. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's one of those things like I actually don't have a bad voice. I'm not a singer, but my voice is okay. And mm -hmm. if I understand my words, I can present them. <laughs> but thank you. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, this is funny and lighthearted and uh, satirical. And, uh, and all my songs, they're all different. There's probably... This is probably the only one that's like that. Um, yeah, it, I feel like I have my uh, grandfather's Victrola on when you're playing that. You needed you some know? scratches to go along yeah, with that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, well. Yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I screwed up the ending. I forgot my lick that I play at the end. Oh, really? Well, I, never I didn't perform. know what the lick was, so yeah, it was the lick perfect is perfect for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. Something like that. Okay, we'll insert that on the end. Thank you, thank you. In our minds. We'll fix it in the mix. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I wanted to uh, tell you what we've been doing. Uh, Brian and I have been lately sailing, and we're planning another trip, if, mm. uh, if we, uh, especially if we get eno enough interest, and booking some concerts that we arrive by sea oh. uh, along the uh, Massachusetts and Maine coast mm. this summer. And can I show you just a little clip? I oh, think yeah. I can do this on... Uh, you know, direct here on uh, the, the the program. Let's give it a let's give it a try. Um, and here we go. Mm, oh, look at that! Which one oh, is the captain? I... So we are actually taking over this. We're taking uh, over the ship. Ship. It's <laughs> beautiful. Oh, I see now what it is. Yeah. yeah. I'll give it a day off. Look, this it... ship uh, kind of came Carry up right next to us. Raising their boats in terror. That's huge. Wow. And, uh, 
Let me see. And uh, so we just for fun, we thought we would, uh, you know, this is a, a, a ship that was oh, right next Tabor. to us here. And oh, which one that is keep the captain? Stopping. I am. We're taking over the ship. Excellent. I'll get a day off. <laughs> Look, Mario, they're raising their boats in terror. Look at that. Okay, you're relieved, Captain. We'll take it from here. I'm Noah. Captain Noah was a good sport, and he could clearly tell that we were just pirate wannabes from that harmless little boat next door. So we had no idea that he was going to be a musician. Really? <laughs> yeah, it turned into a jam session. Wow. And more than that, uh, harmonica player. Uh oh. Oh, see, it stops. Oh wow, it's an F harp. <laughs> yeah, I don't have one of those on there. <laughs> wow. Yeah, the film is sort of stopping. It's, yeah, it keep, keeps on stopping. But anyway, that's that's the idea. Mm. And so, um, the uh, we filmed some of our adventures. You know, some of the beautiful scenery and uh, just some of the fun things that we did, like uh, you know. Try Pirates for a day, <laughs> mm -hmm. and and then Brian just put it up on this channel called uh, Acoustic Sailing. So if you mm -hmm. go to YouTube dot com slash Acoustic Sailing, then mm -hmm. you can catch all of our adventures there. And, mm -hmm. uh, Very cool. Yeah, Maine is so beautiful. I I grew up in in New York, uh, and so sometimes we would go up to New England for summer vacations. My parents. We would drive up there in Mount Desert Island and all those places. Uh, and, uh, oh, it's just uniquely beautiful. And the coastline is just full of all sorts of surprises, little, little, tons of little islands and little bays and uh, yeah. big rock formations and uh, tidal pools. And uh, the water's cold there, though. If you go swimming, it's cold. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I remember my dad dived in one time, and he didn't come up for a while. He said that... When he dove, dove into the water, his whole body froze, and he was like, Dah! and we were going, wonder where dad is, and he, he sort of floated up, like, ah! like that, after about 10, 10 or 20 seconds, and uh. said, it's so cold. <laughs> That's why the lobsters like it, I guess. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, we actually did get in to, to swim for uh, a couple of times. <laughs> <laughs> but it was quite something to ease ourselves in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, man. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, should I play something else? Yeah, yeah. I would love for you to do I that. just, I just sort of feel like that and, you know, sort of lighthearted. I, I had a track I wanted to play with, but let me just do something lighthearted first. Yeah. <laughs> Thing. 
Love that. Love that stuff. Uh, I want to mention to people who are watching, we have uh, everything linked on that page, murielanderson.com slash now. So Howard's website is linked on there, and I, I would recommend picking up some of his recordings. And you always done just really cool things, really innovative projects, one after the other. And uh, the yeah. link to Acoustic Sailing is there. We'd love if you'd uh, subscribe or leave a message, uh, leave a comment there. Uh, and I want to thank everyone. Uh, we, had a, uh, we had asked people to subscribe earlier, and we got enough subscriptions to call it uh, the Acoustic Sailing channel. They, they, you have to have a certain mu minimum mm -hmm. number of subscriptions before you can have your custom channel name, and we got it. So we want to thank everyone for that. Mm. and uh, ask everyone to pop, a, pop us a little note there. That would be great. Uh, and then also the uh, Acoustic Chef is there. So if you wanted to check out some of the recipes, you can do that as well. So we're, we're winding down. Uh, I'll, one thing I should mention that, you know, I played my first tour um, about a week and a half ago mm. <laughs> in Florida wow. uh, in a oh, year, yeah, you know, yeah, you a couple of gigs and, yeah. and a workshop in Georgia on the way back. And uh, I was listed in, on the obituaries page oh. uh, in Dalton, oh. Georgia. So I want to clear this up, <laughs> even though my picture is on the obituaries page that, oh that no, it, indeed, uh, that's quite exaggerated, as they say. Oh. And... Uh, <laughs> oh. Oh. So, so that's a first. It's the first time I've uh, I've seen uh, my picture right there. Words fail me. I, <laughs> I, 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 I don't want to even get into that one. Boy, oh boy! boy well, oh boy. Uh, and uh, also, uh, you know, ch check in the, every Monday. We're ha having some really cool guests. Uh, Tommy Emanuel, Patty Larkin are coming up, and a couple of others I can't name yet because they haven't yet confirmed. So we have, have to. Uh, arrange dates for everyone so uh, it's going to be really cool and uh, and, and I want to thank you Howard for, for being part of this and sure really. can, I, can I play my last little number my little duet with Bach absolutely well you know I, I've, I've always loved the, the music of Bach I, uh, when I was 14 I studied the pipe organ for two years mm -hmm. and that's where the love of the music came from because you know, I'd be previously to that, I thought Bach was kind of dry and mechanical sounding and on um, piano, but when I played it on the organ, uh, it was just some wild gypsy kind of stuff that he wrote. Uh, yeah. And then later I discovered, you know, much more music of his, and I started playing some of his flute sonatas on the harmonica, because they really fit. And, but then there was this one flute sonata that the second movement of this sonata is really the theme the melody it sounds like a little Walter blues it the first few notes are like I'm I kid you not like <laughs> just like off the wall <laughs> yeah. and uh, so I I just always in my imagination dreamed of playing this tune bringing out the bluesiness in it while still having respect for Bach and one day it, it just sort of came together and I had memorized it, and I laid down a piano track that was very bluesy and gospely, and I, I put the harmonica on it. And it, actually, the recording is, of course, it's on my website. Y'all can buy it if you want. Uh, and also, I transcribed what I played on harmonica, as well as a very close transcription to the piano part. It's all available there. And uh, so, I, obviously, I have the piano track, and... Uh, I'd like to play along with it if you don't mind. Okay. It's a Howard and Harwardo duet. <laughs> uh, oh, 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 come on, phone. Don't go away now. Uh... <laughs>
all. <laughs> oh, see what I mean about one of the greatest musicians playing the harmonica? <laughs> That's wonderful. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Boy. Uh, so now I'm I'm speechless now on that. That's cool. Hmm. You know, well, uh, we are over time, but I, since you're here, I wonder if we could just play one more together. Would you be okay with that? Sure. Okay, this would be our, our, our outer, you know, we, even though we are way longer than I uh, planned. But And also after this, I want to uh, recommend to everyone to go to Howard's site and also go to my YouTube page because that uh, Tuvan Horseman is up. And we do have a question, though, here. Uh, uh, May is asking us uh, if we took lessons as kids and how did we approach music when we were young. Howard, can you address that? Yeah. Uh, I started playing piano when I was about eight and a half years old. Um, I had private piano lessons for a few months, and then uh, my teacher recommended that I go to a music school. So I ended up at the Manhattan School of Music uh, for four years on Saturday afternoons studying classical piano and music theory. And I also got used to performing uh, in front of, uh, you know, the, the little student recitals that they would have every week. And I played in quite a few of those. And, but I started improvising like my third piano lesson. Uh, I, I, could, I guess I had some stuff saved up that I didn't even know about. So even though I did study, and I, I, not even though, I mean, I studied and I always improvised. So it was just a matter of, you know, how far I was going to take that. But that's, that's how I started. Yeah. And my path was quite different. My mother taught piano lessons, uh, but oh, that's they, right. yeah. they didn't take for me. <laughs> 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 so, uh, you know, I, I did the minimum that I needed to do it. And I would always ask her if she could just play it so I could hear what it sounded like. And then I would memorize it really quickly so I wouldn't have to read the music. So I <laughs> Me too. I, yes, yes, we're both improvisers at heart. Yeah, yes. so I didn't like to read music, and uh, I prefer just to do it by ear. Um, and when I went to college, so because that was the only way I can continue playing guitar. So I've, guitar was my love. You know, that's what I did for fun. Music, piano is what I had to do for, you know, as a chore. Mm. <laughs> so mm. maybe that's why I didn't take. Uh, but I, I still had to take beginning piano lessons at DePaul University <laughs> when oh. I started. Oh. So, uh, as I said, it, yeah, they didn't. Uh, the, yeah, the when you don't want to play take. an instrument, you know, yeah, it, it's that's one of the interesting <laughs> things for me was when I started playing harmonica at 18, I was already, a, you know, a very good pianist and I was playing a lot of advanced jazz stuff. I was writing my own mm -hmm. tunes. Uh, so, the harmonica, I just wanted to play blues. But yeah. very quickly, after I learned how to play, and figured out how to play the basic blues stuff and you know all that stuff i was curious as to why all the notes weren't on the instrument that seemed crazy to me it's missing like six notes it's got a three octave range and uh you know i was a stubborn 18 year old kid and i thought well, i'm going to find those missing notes and i did uh as a freshman at northwestern i, I discovered these missing notes and i'm pretty much the first one to discover all of them. I mean, there's some people that squeaked out a few, but it never, uh, these uh, it extended techniques that I discovered were never part of harmonica mainstream, and I just right. found them on my own. And that's how I can play all this. <laughs> well, it's stuff on a diatonic harmonica, and I don't need the, the one with the button. Yeah, so, I think uh, that's yeah. really something. that You've, you've uh, brought the harmonica to a new level, the same way that Bela Fleck has elevated the banjo, and the same way that Andre Segovia elevated the guitar. And it's, yeah, I'm in good company. I, I'm, yeah. I'm happy to be there. It's, uh, <laughs> right. and it's, uh, it's really uh, liberated this instrument that people, after I got more well-known, people would hear it and go, you know, I didn't know you could play that kind of stuff on this instrument. And it was very exciting for a lot of harmonica players to be able to expand their their musical vocabularies and repertoire because i i just always wanted to take this instrument everywhere possible musically because i i love like you with the guitar you fall in love with an instrument and you just want to play everything possible on it yeah and then we go into teaching so now i'm, I'm sharing a lot of uh, what i learned and the process of how i learned i'm going to be putting up a new 
a piece on my True Fire channel, in fact, uh, this mm. evening. So mm. if you go to my teaching channel, and that's linked there as well, mm. uh, I've got some new free tutorials. I'm um, doing Lady Pamela this time. Mm. And so uh, so that'll that'll be up as well. But let's finish off with a yeah. tune. Uh, how about the uh, mm. one that I wrote for papri the paprika? Mm. That's what I wrote for oh, the goulash okay. recipe. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It's going to be in B minor. Mm. All right. So let's see what happens. Uh, <laughs> That's <will>. a first. <laughs> okay. It's just such an honor to, to play with you and uh, that you uh, joined us here on Monday Live. Thanks for having me. 
Okay. So and then everyone else, we'll see you next Monday, same time, same place. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Howard. Ciao, ciao. Ciao.